What's going on guys? Welcome back to Turner Fishing. It's been a while. Been a while. So what have I been up to? I've been fishing. Honestly. Fishing. Fishing, fishing, fishing. Hard. You know, 90, 100 degrees and 110 index. You're out there sweating. You got sweat going where it don't need to be. But uh, I'm going to start something new guys. Uh, I'm going to throw it up right here. This is a sticker of the week. If you didn't know, I I do a little bit of graphic design on the side. That's what I do besides videos, and I also do uh, website testing. Um, if you didn't know that, and that's how I make a, a, a living, I guess. Besides, uh, you know, people buying the shirts and now stickers. So, uh, like I said, I, I got a bunch of designs. I'll throw up a couple right here just so you can see them. Uh, check out the link in the description. It really helps the channel out. I, I only get about 20 cents a sticker, but you can buy, you know, a sticker probably this big for around a dollar something. I mean, it, it's a great deal. And if you have any suggestions, you can leave them in the comments or message me on Facebook and I can create you a sticker just for you and you can buy it off the website. You know, it's hassle free. I don't have to do anything. I just make the design and they print it and ship it to you. But... Let's get into the topic today. Late summer to fall. What's going on on the lake? Um, past three, four weeks. Been really hot. Extremely tough. Uh, bass don't want to cooperate. Uh, the only thing that I could get on the bite was a buzz bait and a popper, stuff like that. Mostly just top water and one every now and then on a 10 xd but right now what we figured out is happening is the water's dropping the water temp is dropping it was 88 degrees in the river uh just last week 88 degrees in the river so probably 87 ish 86 ish towards the dam because if you didn't know this the dam's a lot cooler than the river because the river is going to have a lot more uh, stain to it. So when you got more stain versus clear water, which I mean, don't get me wrong. Right now in the river, we got like five foot visibility and I absolutely hate it. <laughs> As a shallow water fisherman, I hate clear, clear water. Like one foot of visibility, I'm good to go. But the clear water is going to stay cooler than the dirty water. So, so what that entitles is... Uh, the shad that's on the main lake they've been on these main lake uh points main lake deep spots when you got to cool the water these shad these threadfin shad that, that was in the shad spawn and all that they're about two to three to four inches long and i mean if you've been on the lake you've seen them <clears throat> they're literally balls of, of shad everywhere you know it got to a point where me and dad we're crappy fishing uh, Monday, I believe, or Friday. It's one of them. And when we were under the bridge, the bridge just erupted with bass. And I'm talking two, three pounders. I mean, it wasn't no dinks. And I threw my plug out. And I'll show you the clip. I mean, I caught two on one plug. That's the first time I've ever done it. But... I'm going to show y'all the clip from that, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to tell y'all how to target and catch these schooling. Alright, I finally got my camera to work. I just caught two on one plug. <laughs> they got one up there. We, we got to get the plug back in the water. Right. <laughs> he, he done got a good one. Ow. Little guy, I think. Look at him go. Golly. Oh. I mean, was that cool or not? I mean, I didn't get, I couldn't get my GoPro to turn on to show me catching the fish, but 
two on one plug that's the first for me and dad hooked up with like a two and a half on a flute so let me explain what's happening as the water drops these shad are moving from the main lake and they're going to push back to the creeks the creeks going to have warmer water okay so the bass are going to follow them so how do you find these fish i mean honestly use your depth finder and use your eyes you can go through idle through a creek the, the main channel i mean don't be idling on the bank i want use your maps idle through the main creek you know and you pop, pop up google earth the best creeks are going to be the biggest creeks if you want me to explain more on that let me know down in the comments below i can make a whole video on that bigger creeks are better for bass if you don't know why i can tell you but let me know if y'all want to check that out i can make i can pull up google earth and Maybe on it's on the computer and do a video on that. So anyway, the the shad when they move back, I mean that's what the bass are eating. Yes, they eat hair and everything, but those are the fish that's out there in sixty foot of water. If you like targeting them, that's cool. But those fish are gonna be there one day and they ain't gonna be there the next. These fish you can replicate this pattern all over the lake. But you've got to find the bait. You know, the old saying goes, if you can find the bait, you can find the fish. This is especially true for coming, going from late summer to fall, early fall, and even into fall. You, when you get there in, in, the, in the morning or you night, night fish or in the evening, you will see uh, these balls of, of shad on the surface. I mean, they will be huge. You can just everywhere. But you've got to find where they're eating them and that's where your your electronics come in and if you're good at reading your electronics you can actually see under the bait balls if something's eating them and that's where i would start fishing because eventually they're going to surface and you're going to catch them really really easy so i was in buffalo creek uh last week and Every secondary point in Buffalo Creek, if you know Buffalo Creek, there's three secondary points on the right going into Buffalo Creek. And every single point, they were coming up schooling about every 10 minutes. And those were the fish that you can't catch. And, I mean, you're thinking, what do you mean you can't catch them? You're telling me you can target them. What happened? I don't know why, and I can't explain it. But there is absolutely some schools of fish that are up there busting. I mean, the whole point is just erupted with fish. You can throw whatever the hell you want in there, and they're not going to bite it. No idea why. And you can go to the next point. They're doing the same thing, and you can catch one every single cast. But you go back to that other point, that school of, of bass won't bite. It's, I mean, that's bass fishing. So... We know where to go, where to look. Now, once you find this, you find the bait. You find the bait being eaten on your electronics, or you see it with your eyes. You see fish busting on them. I mean, not like a whole school, but if you got bait around and you see fish coming up that ain't gar or something, stay in that area. Throw the baits I'm about to talk about, and I'm going to show you my setups and everything like that. And, I mean, when, it, when, it, when a bass schools, it's like, a homing missile you can literally probably throw anything in there if they're biting you're gonna catch them there's no you and you want to work it as fast as possible I've thrown a fluke out and literally winded it like this because I missed the school and I was trying to get back to the boat and they, they will just explode on it while you're winding in it's, it's unreal the amount of targeting they can do I mean, it's like launching a missile, that's like a heat-seeking missile, but it's like a bait-seeking missile. <laughs> so, I mean, once you find these fish, you got to set up on them. You got to follow them. If they if they're schooling over here, I try to go halfway because nine out of ten times they're schooling over here, and you crank up the big motor, run over there, you get about two casts on it, you might catch one. Then they're gonna be way over here. I mean, it's a game. You got to be at the right place, at the right time. But if you wait it out, it's a really fun way to fish. Because once you get into the rhythm of it, 
You can catch a lot of fish, guys. So, what baits do I recommend? Number one bait for schooling fish, a fluke. You can't beat a fluke. They're going to eat it. You can put two of these things on, on a double fluke rig or a donkey rig. And you put that thing in the water, and you want it on top of the water. Don't, don't be jerking it under the water. You want this thing just sliding across the water, darting in and out. And they would just come up and explode on it. So we got a fluke. That's my number one recommendation. A four out hook, extra wire gap hook. Uh, heavy, heavy wire just to get it down just a little bit. Because once the school goes down, you can still throw a fluke out and fish it like a jerk bait. And catch them that way. So the next thing I want to talk about is I'm in the trees I gotta move everything this cast master spoon right here I love throwing this spoon for uh, schooling fish just because I try to keep it on the deck if they go out of reach and I can actually cast to them and hit them but also like like in my instance, when I'm fishing the bridges and they get there, they suspend under that bridge and they corral the bait around the pillars and they push them up. So I can drop that spoon down and jig it and actually catch a few that way. I've caught some pretty big bass doing that. Next thing I like to throw, I got a little 360 search bait and a Kytec, but I'm actually out of Kytec. So I used my last one yesterday, a striper tort and half. But, uh, like, just any swim bait, really. I mean, you could use a rage tail, anything. Just something that you can burn across that school. And, I mean, that's pretty much it. Like, you, you get in that school. Like, if they're coming up busting and you get a bait, you want to throw the bait behind them. And you come over them, if they're going to bite it, they're going to bite it. Yeah, you're probably going to miss a few. Like, oh, I missed him. Oh, I missed him. But... You got the number one bait as in a fluke but if you're fishing lake murray and you ain't got a berkeley cane you're doing something wrong i got this sucker on 65 pound braid and you can throw that cane walker a mile that i would use <clears throat> when um these these fish are schooling so let's talk about when they're not up like because you got you gotta you gotta believe like you gotta give them 10 minutes that that's in my head 10 minutes if i if if i throw in a school and i don't i don't get a bite twice like if they're schooling and, and i hit it perfectly i go right over their head and they don't bite it i'm going to go find another school of fish but once these fish that you find that are actually catchable go down, what do you do? Now, if they're coming up really shallow, you can actually throw a worm out, like a Texas rig. I've caught a couple four and five pounders doing that when they go down. Because the bigger fish are hanging at the bottom. All right, you've got the, the buck bass up here, the two, three pounders, one pounders. They're up here just annihilating the shad. The bigger fish, they're going to be right underneath them. All right. Why are they there? They're going to be eating the shad that got killed and just that's fluttering down. So as I say that, what baits come to mind? All right. You throw a worm out on the bottom. It's on the bottom. Okay. They'll bite it. I'll call a couple that way. All right, falling dead shad. First thing that comes to my mind is a weightless fluke. Fish extremely slow. I'm talking, you you throw that joker out there and just let it fall. And as you know, a fluke in five foot of water, I mean, that's going to take a whole minute to get to the bottom. So you got to be patient. Then jerk, jerk, and do it all again. Jerk, jerk do it all again all while having the old cane right there on your deck unhooked and ready to rock 
So you fish that that fluke extremely slow, right there, and I'm telling you, you're gonna get the biggest bass of that school sitting down there, being lazy as a big bass does, waiting on that that free meal that one of his buddies done killed. Okay, and number three, a lipless crankbait. You know, you get a chrome lipless crankbait. The shad this time of year are probably about this long. They're probably three to four inches from. I mean, that's all the, the shad that spawn and the shad spawn. I mean, they're growing up. I mean, you're going to have two inches, but hold on, let me let this car pass. <clears throat> I mean, a lipless crankbait honestly fits the profile extremely well. A lipless crankbait, um, a shad wrap. Stuff like that, a little cotton cordell shad wrap, probably, you know, five inches long. And that brings me to number four that I would probably use is jerkbait. Uh, jerkbait, you can get it down just like the fluke, but you can get a reaction by a lot faster than a fluke fluttering. So, I mean, it's, it's two each his own. If you want to fish the fluke slowly, I would go for that. But if you want something... You know more intensive <laughs> for the lack of better words uh tie on a jerk bait uh the cat the strike king jerk baits are just fine i would use a white or a chrome sexy shad stuff like that but once you figure out you know how long it takes or right, staying in the same spot because I mean you've got a point you got a point right here all right they come up here I would fish this area like not like the exact spot they came up I mean sure fix to fish that but fish all the way around that little area until they come up again unless you can visually see or you're lucky enough to have pan optics the shad on top of the surface i mean you can fish shad balls too i mean that, that's a way to catch them too you can actually see the shad on the surface and you can throw your fluke in there and you can get bit too but that'll do it guys i mean this late summer going into fall is i mean i know people are out there deer hunting i know people out there dove hunting but if you can get out in the water and you can find these shad and you can find these fish that are busted on them you can have an extremely fun day on the water or vice versa. You can have a really fast limit and you can go out there and try to find a bigger kicker to win that tournament. But as always, guys, stay tuned for more videos. Sorry I haven't been posting as much lately. It's just, it's been tough out here. Like I said, it took 19 pounds to win last weekend. I have no idea what they're doing. Uh, they were probably caught towards the dam. I don't fish towards the dam, so don't know. Uh, if anybody wants to take me towards the dam, you know, hit me up on Facebook and let's go fishing.